All right, hello everyone. This is Kevin Best at the ACC, I'm trying to go through and make sure everybody has permission to record. If for some reason you don't, just hit me up in the chat and I will try to get to everybody. I've gotten to a lot of folks. Kevin, did you get my request? Sorry, who was that? Trevor. Trevor, sorry. Yeah, I see you now. Hold Thanks, on. Thanks, Kevin. No problem. People coming in and gets it out of order. All right, everyone. Uh, like I said before, if you are uh, on and you have not received permission to record, just let me know. I will make sure to give that to you. Uh, there you go, Coach. So welcome to the 2022 Subway ACC football championship game, Sunday night teleconference, Zoom. Uh, we're welcomed by Clemson head coach Dabo Sweeney. The Tigers are 10-2 and overall, 8-0 in the Atlantic and our champions of our Atlantic division. So coach, we'll turn it over to you for, for an opening statement and then we'll uh, take questions. Okay, appreciate it. Um, well, we're excited about being back in the ACC championship game in the great city of Charlotte. Uh, super excited about that and uh, to represent the Atlantic, uh, you know, certainly, uh, uh, you know, a big goal of ours uh, that we weren't able to achieve last year. Uh, so, you know, winning the division this year and. And in particular, you know, the last year of, of, of the divisions, I think that was uh, uh, kind of a, another uh, goal within our goals this year. But uh, so we're excited about the opportunity to still be playing and look forward to the trip up there. We've got a great amount of respect for, uh, you know, Coach Brown and the job he's done at, at North Carolina um, and uh, the year that they've had. Got a lot of uh, dynamic playmakers that we've been able to see, you know, throughout the year. You know, uh, none more so than their quarterback. Um, you know, has had a, a Heisman type year, so uh, it's going to be should be a great uh, uh, venue and a great night there in Charlotte. And again, looking forward to uh, you know competing against a great team. All right, thanks, Coach. Um, as always with the Zoom call, if you have a question, please raise your hand. We have a lot of folks on today, so I'll try to get to as many as as possible. First up is Trevor Groves. Trevor, go ahead. Hey, Coach, um, it was an epic uh, 
meaning the last time you played the Tar Heels in 2019 in Chapel Hill. Um, just what do you remember about that game? And uh, what can you say about the job that Matt Brown has done with this program? Uh, he's done an amazing job. I mean, just, I think, coming in and really, uh, you know, just – you know, building a culture and solidifying uh, their organization and, and uh, you know, impacting the recruiting, uh, which ultimately impacts the, the product on the field. And so he's done a, a wonderful job of that. Um, they've got a lot of great players. Uh, they, they, he's got an excellent staff. And uh, so that particular game was, uh, was a crazy day. Uh, I think it was an early game, if I remember, but, but uh, you know, came down to, you know, the last play. And, uh, you know, it was a, a great play by our guys. Uh, you know, I think it was, uh, if I remember correctly, maybe Skowski was in on that play. Uh, but uh, it, was, uh, it was a good one. Isaiah Simmons, maybe, was another one in on that one. But uh, tough, tough, hard-fought game, as was the last time we played them in the ACC championship game. Uh, that was, that was a, a play that came down to an onside kick. So, Got a lot of respect for these guys and, and uh, you know, the type of program that they have and the players that they have within it. Okay, our next question will go to Andrea Adelson. Andrea, go ahead. Dabo, when you reviewed the tape from uh, yesterday's game in terms of some of the struggles in the passing game, how much of that was on DJ? How much of that was on the receivers, the line? I know there's a lot of moving parts, but, you know, do you have a clearer idea today kind of what went into some of those struggles? Oh, yeah. I got a much clearer idea. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, it was a combination of all a lot of things. We had, um, you know, really uh, one time early, we had the burning stool wide open. And, uh, you know, we, we uh, uh, get hit and, uh, you know, did not do a good job protecting on that particular play. I mean, wide open. And then we had, Another time we missed a throw to Antonio who was who was open and then we hit him and we dropped it and then we had a couple mores and we dropped it and and so we had some critical drops and some misplays uh, you know and and those things add up and next thing you know the turnovers with empty possessions you, know, you, you turn over a kick return you turn over a punt return now you're out of rhythm and and then you have some drops and a few misplays along the way and, and it's uh it's a recipe for getting beat. So, you know, but our kids competed. Uh, I love that, that how they competed. Uh, you know, again, you just got to congratulate South Carolina. They found a way to win the game. We certainly had plenty of opportunity to win it. And uh, we did not, we didn't get it done. And uh, the turnovers really hurt us and caught up with us and some big plays on defense. So it was a combination of a lot of things. Uh, you know, certainly BJ had some plays that he'd like to have back, but you know, he, he wasn't, uh, he, he was not, he was a long way away from being the reason we lost the game. That's for sure. Um, so he, he doesn't return kicks and play safety and, 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 you know, catch the ball. Uh, he can only control his part, but you know, all of those things I think affect, you know, just your psyche and the rhythm of the game and so forth. But, you know, again, uh, I still love how they competed a lot of, a lot of tough things within the game, but, you know, competed all the way to the end, and unfortunate that we didn't get a chance there to kick with the, with the last fumble on the punt return. That was kind of the final uh, final deal there. But just got to congratulate South Carolina and Shane, and, and uh, for those guys finding a way to win the game because they 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 just won it. Okay, our next question is from Matt Connolly. Go ahead, Matt. <laughs> yeah, well, in addition to the passing game, just what else kind of stood out, both good and bad, um, about yesterday's game and, and what went right, what went wrong when you went back and watched it? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, just, again, misplays, uh, turnovers, uh, and then some some critical uh, big plays on defense where we just uh, didn't do what we needed to do. And uh, so, you know, and they and they made us pay for it. Uh, but, you know, had, had, had a couple of miscues up front. Um, as well, but just a combination of all those things. And in a game like that, I mean, it's a rivalry game. It's a, it's, it's a few plays, but more than anything, uh, you know, missed opportunities with the drops, a couple of missed plays uh, and, and the turnovers. I mean, again, you get the safety and you get a nice little kick return to the 30 something there and, and 
you know, you got one of your best players and you know, the ball's loose and just, just kind of, you know, away from his body and comes out. Uh, and then, you know, you, you got, even with all the stuff that, that had gone on, you still got a chance there at the end. You're going to have a, you know, first down on right there at midfield about the 48 and, you know, you get one more fumble. So special teams, the two, two return, the two returns that, that we got no opportunity with, those are empty possessions. Uh, the field position, their punter was tremendous. Uh, we had a lot of, you know, tough field position, uh, but we did a lot of good things in the game too. I know we like to focus on all the bad uh, when we lose, but there were a lot of good things in the game uh, that we'll see when we watch the tape as well. But, you know, just, just didn't do what we need to do to win the game. And you have to win those type of games. We had plenty of opportunity, plenty, you know, two, two plays, three plays, you win it. Um, but you got to give their guys credit. I mean, because they were behind the whole game. They trailed the entire game and they just kept battling. And then, uh, you know, the field goal put them up there in the fourth quarter and, and we weren't able to uh, to respond. And again, some, some huge missed opportunities, you know, three big drops, um, you know, that I felt like could have, could have uh, made a difference for us, but, you know, just wasn't our day. Okay, our next question is from Larry Williams. Larry, go ahead with your question. Sorry, can you hear me? I uh, can now. Okay, sir, I apologize. I had my, my mute on accidentally. Um, can you share what, how you're moving forward with the quarterback situation this week. Is DJ still the guy? Um, what have y'all concluded, I guess, uh, as of this afternoon? So are you asking me if he's the reason we lost? No, no, I'm not. I'm just I'm just curious if he's still the starter. Yeah, he's still the starter. Yeah, still the starter. He didn't he did he's not the reason we lost the game. And uh he he can't catch it. You know, and again, he doesn't play safety and he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't return kicks. Uh, so he, he's got his share of things that, that he can do better, but, um, you know, he, he's, he, he will, he will definitely start the game. Okay. Our next question is from Leo Haggerty. Go ahead, Leo. Coach, you're dealing not only with a loss, but a lot of other things. First time in eight games with South Carolina, first home loss in 40 you don't want this to fester into a second one. What are you going to have to do this week to make sure you get over this game? Well, just like we've always done, you go back to work and uh, you move on to the next opponent. That's what we've always done. Um, you know, we, you know, all those things are great. And we, we've done all those things, but, uh, you, you know, the last time we lost, we went back to work. Uh, and that's what you do. This is a championship game. This is going to be uh, you know, a, a, another great, uh, venue and great environment and two teams that really want to win. Uh, but, you know, you, you, you keep good perspective, you learn, you teach, you know, we, you, you uh, make sure your guys understand what's reality and what's not, especially at a place like Clemson when you lose a game. Um, and then, you know, you lose. I mean, I, I, I wish we had won eight in a row. Uh, we didn't. And we had our opportunity to, but you know, somewhere along the line, you got to give the opponent some credit too. And uh, you know, their kids earned it, and uh, we had plenty of opportunities and didn't do what we needed to do. So, uh, and as I said yesterday, there's probably a reason why no one's won eight in a row in this series. It's hard to do in a rivalry game, and uh, we've had a lot of great days, and yesterday wasn't one of them. So, you know, you you learn from it and you move on to the next one, just like what's led to all of our consistency. When we've won a game, we do the same thing. We don't linger around in that either. We learn from it and we move on to the next one. So really no different than anything that we, we always do. Thank you, coach. Yes, sir. Okay, our next question is from David Teal. David, go ahead with your question. Yeah, but when your opening statement, you said that Drake May was having a Heisman type season you have competed against and coached some of the best young quarterbacks this league has ever seen. Does Drake May have some common traits with a Trevor Lawrence or a Jameis Winston? Absolutely. He's, he's, he's a great one. I mean, uh, I know they've had a, a couple of tough games, but again, you know, he, he, he can only do his job. Right. Uh, and not that he's perfect or anything like that, but, he is, uh, 
you know, teams win, and but he's – He's got all the attributes. We recruited him. We offered him. We 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 loved him coming out of high school. So uh, and nothing's changed. I mean, he's a great great player. Um, you know, with with he's a winner. You know, he's got a great competitive streak to him. That's what I like about him most. Is he's incredibly competitive, um, and he just has a lot of confidence that he can make the play required. Uh, but he's he's got a nice arm. He's, he sees it. He's got a high football IQ. He's an excellent leader. Uh, you see all those things. Uh, so he can move around. I mean, he can do, he can run with it. I mean, he can do a little bit of everything. So he's a complete, he's a complete player at that position. I see over your right shoulder, a diagram of SoFi Stadium, which is where the CFP final is. Yeah. Do, do you have to adjust some team goals now in the wake of yesterday? Uh, not really. I mean, you know, we, we didn't achieve the goal that we had yesterday. So, you know, we still have, we've got two goals left and that is, uh, to win the ACC and to win the closer. So we don't have to adjust anything. Um, you know, we've got a chance to hit four out of our five goals. And, um, you know, if we do that, we're going to have had a great year, uh, for sure. But, um, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's been there since the summer. Um, I think one of the operations guys brought that back. So uh, I guess I won't need the directions uh, to it, but uh, yeah, appreciate you pointing that out. Yeah, it's been there. I didn't even notice it's been there, been there always. It's something been there a long time, but um, you know that, and again, that's, that's, that's not a goal. You know, it's not, there's nothing in here that says win the national championship. Our goals are win the opener, you know, win the division, win the state, win the ACC and win the closer. And when we've done that, we've won the national championship. You know, our goals are set up to allow us to compete at the highest level. But the reason that it doesn't say win the national championship on there is because we don't control that, right? I mean, we can win all of our games and somebody could say, no, you don't qualify, right? So, you know, we set our goals up that allow us to compete at the highest level. And that's worked out for us a lot this year. You know, we're not going to hit all five, but we do have an opportunity still to, to hit four out of five. And if we do that, we're going to have another great year here. And, uh, and keep moving forward. So uh, this is a huge goal for us, always has been. And, uh, you know, when, you, when we've won the league, it's always led to, to bigger things. And uh, so, uh, you know, and, and not winning the state championship uh, a couple of times along the way in our past has kept us out of some bigger opportunities. You know, we've not won our state championship, won the league, been in the Orange Bowl, et cetera. Um, but you know when we've hit all five, uh, we, we've we've been we've won it all uh, a couple of times. So uh, that's uh, that's that's why they are what they are. But we don't have to adjust anything. You know we've got two goals left and uh, win the ACC and win the closer. And we hit those two goals, we we will have had a heck of a year uh, here at Clemson. All right, our next question is from Chapel Fowler. Chapel, go ahead with your question. Hey, Debo, you, you mentioned last night um, wishing you had gotten Shipley the ball a little bit more in the second half. Um, after looking at the film, do you have a better idea of why that didn't happen? Uh, well, I mean, there's some some read things where it didn't happen and just, just you know, just the play call didn't go to him. And, uh, and then, again, we had uh, you know, a, miss, a missed possession there at the end that, that uh, hurt us. Uh, some missed plays that – killed some sequence, more sequence of plays and opportunities there. But, um, you know, definitely something, you know, 2020, hindsight's 2020 for sure. And, you know, wish, wish we could have gone back and, and redone a couple of those. Okay, our next question is from Anna Adams. Anna, go ahead with your question. Hey, Dabo. Um, Coach Streeter said after the game that Clemson wide receivers didn't particularly win against man coverage. Um, looking at the film, any reason – why there was so much struggle there? Uh, well, they did a good job on a couple of occasions. Uh, there were several times where they won, and and we we didn't, you know, we dropped it, or uh, we missed the throw, or the protection let us down. But uh, they did a good job of really playing some some outside technique leverage, and then we came back and made them pay for that, and hit Bo for a big play. Uh, but we we missed a couple of other opportunities, and then Bo getting hurt was certainly a loss for us. But um, you know, uh, definitely not our best day. 
Okay, our next question is from back to Andrea Adelson. Andrea, go ahead. Dabo, I think uh, you have a negative turnover margin in your last five games. I'm just wondering if there's a common denominator there and uh, how much of a concern that is headed into Saturday. That's a huge concern, you know, because if, if we lose the margin this week, we'll lose the game. I mean, it's, um, you know, uh, I, it's, I knew going into this game uh, and when, when we've, when we've lost to these guys, that's been the common denominator is, is um, you know, the five game streak that we had uh, at that point was, and we had 15 turnovers to their three. Um, and this run that we had of seven in a row, we really did a great job of being even or better, you know, all but one time we were minus one and we still won in 15, but it was a really close, like a five point game. Um, so it's a big concern going into this game, and it's, and it's frustrating. Um, and it's a lot of fundamental stuff, you know, just guys getting the ball out um, and away from their body and, you know, uh, sometimes trying to do too much. And it's, it's, been, it's been an issue these past five games. But uh, we've also shown that we can do an outstanding job. The first seven games, we had three turnovers. So we have shown that we can – you know, do a good job of that, but it's been a real problem. We're very fortunate to be three and two uh, in those five games where we've lost the margin. Uh, that's that's it's amazing that we've been able to overcome that uh, and and had an opportunity to overcome it yesterday. And and again, just just couldn't quite uh, get it done, even with the lead for most of the game. All right. As a reminder, make sure to raise your hand if you have a question. We're going to go back to Trevor Groves. Trevor, go ahead. Hey, Coach, I'm, uh, speaking of, of turnovers, I'm curious about the gadget uh, kickoff return. Um, it worked out nicely, except for the fumble by Moffa. Uh, where did that play come from, exactly? Yeah, it's just something we've had, you know, and it's a good time to do it because you know you're going to have a chance at a return, and, and, it, and, and, it, and, it, and it, did, it did pop clean. It almost popped big time, uh, but he kind of got tripped up there, and, and same thing. It's not like he had some big hit, just, just – the ball he just kind of had the ball out from his body and you know just, just uh, came came loose there so uh, just a, one of the best players we have and I'd hand it to him over and over and over uh, so we just gotta just gotta really coach our way and play our way through it it's a real it's a real disappointment right now and it's uh, uh, definitely a huge factor in that game yesterday you know a couple of times again two two one on kick return one on punt return you got all the momentum, you know, on the kick return there after the safety. Um, you know, you're you're up nine with a chance to get good field position and go get points. And, and um, you know, it's an empty possession. And then obviously at the end there, you know, you feel good about your return and, and you got a great kicker. And and um, to not get the opportunity is very frustrating. But again, that's that's football. You know, and when you compete in this arena in this world that we're in. Um, we, we've been we, we've been we, we we've been more blessed than not. I mean, we it's it's bounced our way a lot, um, but you'll have those days somewhere along the way where it doesn't. And you know that was a, a tough thing for us yesterday. Did you put that play in yourself? And have you seen somebody else run that play before? Yeah, we we've had that play in. We put it in. Uh, we've had it, you know, most of the year. Uh, but it was just a you know, like I said, just the right time to call it. But yeah, something that. Was, been in our background for a long time. Thanks, Coach. All right, we'll go back to Larry Williams. Larry, go ahead. Yeah, you mentioned the safety position. Just curious for the day after evaluation on film of that position in general and uh, Makuba in specific. Yeah, he had a rough day and a tough day. And uh, But you know what? Listen, man, I love that kid. And I told him that after the game. This kid, he's he's battled all year. Uh, you know, he didn't he didn't practice. Uh, Monday and Tuesday, and you know, he's out there. He had a little bit of a sore knee, battled through that. He's obviously played with the elbow all year. He's a he's an incredible competitor. He's, he's he cares deeply, and uh, certainly was a game he's going to want to forget. Um, and some you know, plenty of just fundamental things and, and eye discipline things and technique things that he can learn from. But he's going to have a lot more good days than he does bad days in the game of football. Yes, he is a great player, a great competitor, and and he, you know, it's when you play that position, you know, um, there's nowhere to hide <laughs> at times, and so it is what it is there. Um, 
you'd love to have a few plays back, but you don't get those plays back. But but what you can do is you can learn from them, and that's exactly what he'll do. And you know the fourth and one. I mean, and again we got we turned them back over, but you know you stop. I mean it's a one person route, and I mean he it, you know we we stop them right there. You're going to get points there. So just you know one of those one of those plays in the game that that. Um, uh, was was a very difficult play, and then they got us on a little little double move uh, later as well with a, again a nine point lead. So uh, tough day. Uh, JP got banged up, and JP man he came out and he had to go back in. Um, you know, and that's the one thing I will say about our guys, man. I saw I saw a bunch of brothers out there competing for each other, and really, I mean, to the end they battled. They 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 never you know quit. They kept believing. And, um, you know, that's, that's all you can ask these guys. Nobody wants to win more than them. And, uh, you know, you just got to keep teaching and, and growing them up and, uh, and learning and, and uh, put this one behind us and get ready to go compete, uh, you know, for this league title. All right, we got time for about just a, two or three more. Matt Connolly, you're up next. Yeah, but I was just going to ask, how do, you, how do you feel like Cade has been doing in practice and kind of been developing throughout this year? You're doing good. You're doing really good. All right. Our next question is from Leo Haggerty. Go ahead, Leo. Coach, you had a lot of key injuries. You had an ejection. Did that affect the game plan on offense and defense with people in the game that uh, really you didn't expect to have had in the game? Well, I mean, it affects things, but, you know, both sides have players out and, and things like that. And, you know, we, we've got a, you know, we, we had plenty of opportunity and, um, you know, we're in position to win the game all the way to the end and just didn't do it. So, you know, everybody's got guys banged up. They lost a receiver, a really good player. And I, I, I hope he's OK. I don't I didn't look good on the field. Uh, number six for them van uh, when he came down. So um, and everybody's dealing with, with stuff, you know, before the game, during the game. And, you know, our job is to find a way to win. And we didn't we didn't do it. So. Uh, again, you got to congratulate them because uh, they did, and it was a big win. And, and um, you know, we'll learn from it and got to live with it. Got to live with it for 300 and something days. And again, it's been a long time since we've had this feeling, thankfully. And um, get ready for uh, when that time comes again down the road. Thank you, Coach. Okay, our next question is from Brian Murphy. Go ahead, Brian. Hey, Coach, uh, Dave Doran up at NC State said December's turned into one of his least favorite months of the year, given uh, roster management, um, the early signing day, transfer portal, everything that's happening, you know, plus having to get ready for games. How do you how, how do you kind of balance all the things that need to be taken care of this month? Yeah, it's a lot because um, you got recruiting and, uh, you know, so we we obviously are in the championship game this week. So um, although they did make this a dead week, used to for up until this year, this was recruiting started this week. So, you know, we, we were in this game. Uh, I guess this is seven out of the last eight years that we've been in this game. Uh, so the, the previous six times we couldn't, we kind of missed the week because we were getting ready for the championship game. Um, but as soon as the game is over, I mean, literally uh, Sunday, everybody's gone. Everybody's out on the road. So there's a lot to do from a recruiting standpoint, uh, because, you know, we've got the signing day coming up and, and then, um, uh, it's always been a lot bowl, you know, getting ready for your bowl prep, um, you know, the, getting your plan in place for that. Once you kind of know what you're, where you're going and who's your opponent. And, um, you know, there's always a lot of travel time, and playing time and things like that, that you're just constantly working, trying to, to get ready. And so we'll have about, uh, I think we got exactly two weeks, uh, to go recruit. Um, so we'll be busy with that and a week of that will be all recruiting. And then another week of that will be recruiting slash practice, you know, where we'll, depending on, you know, everybody's schedule and stuff, you know, you, you'll be, you know, maybe practice in the morning, recruiting at night, you know, vice versa. Um, you do that for a week and then you've got that signing day on that Wednesday, the 21st, um, and uh, so, you know, fortunately uh, for us, uh, our class is, you know, almost done here. And, um, you know, we've got a lot of guys committed and a lot of guys that will be coming in uh, early in January. So we kind of we pretty much have a pretty clear picture on what our 
class is going to look like and we're super excited about the the group that's coming in um but then you have the added piece of uh, the transfer portal and all that stuff that, that has come about that that creates uh, a different just a different deal you know uh than, than we've had to deal with in the past because now your your roster can look very different by the time you get to your bowl game uh so that's just it just is what it is it's everybody everybody has to deal with it um and you just try to uh, manage that and the very best you can all right, seeing no other questions, and at 428, we'll let Coach go. Coach, really appreciate you joining us, and we will see you in Charlotte on Friday at 245. Thank okay. you. Appreciate it. And for everybody else on the line, we will be joined by North Carolina head coach Mac Brown shortly, and we will get going with him. Trying to get to as many of these uh, requests for record, but if I miss you, just hit me up again. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Coach. How are you? I'm doing good. Well, we're ready if you are. All right, sir. All right. Uh, to everyone on the line, um, welcome again to the uh, 2022 Subway ACC Football Championship game Zoom Sunday uh, teleconference press conference. We're joined by North Carolina head coach Mac Brown. Tar Heels are 9-3 overall, 6-2 and two in the ACC, and our champions of the Coastal Division. Uh, Coach, we could uh, start with an opening statement, and then we'll take questions. Thank you, Kevin. We're uh, really excited to be playing in the uh, ACC championship game. It's only the second time for us since uh, uh, divisions were, were established in 2012. 2015, we actually played Clemson, and Gene Chiswick was our defensive coordinator, and Charlton Warren was uh, our, our secondary coach at that time. Uh, but very, very proud of these guys. So they've done something that's only been done two times uh, since uh, we, we've had division. So uh, proud of them. Also winning nine games here is is important because we haven't done that uh, except one other time since uh, 1997. So these guys have accomplished a lot, uh, winning six games on the road, uh, having a chance to play a, a great team like Clemson is uh, uh, something that is uh, very, very important for us. When I got back, I, I wanted North Carolina football to be relevant again. And we've been to four straight bowls, one of those bowls being the elite Orange Bowl. Um, and then here we are playing Clemson. And Coach, I'm not sure what happened. I think something might have happened to the mute button. You got it now. There we go. We're back. There we sorry. go. Sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't touch it, Kevin. So I'm not sure. Te technology. For it's kind probably of the way my weekend. My weekend has gone. So that just... <laughs> probably on my end, but okay. Sorry. Part of it, but um, uh, proud. Uh, I don't know where we where we stopped, Kevin. Uh, you were talking about making uh, North Carolina football relevant again. Four straight bowl games. Yes, four straight bowl games, one of those being the Orange Bowl, which we'd never been to, and and uh, then getting to the championship game to, to have a chance to play a, a national program like Clemson. Clemson's been the standard in the ACC for many years. When I was here before, it was Florida State. Florida State was in, in the national picture every year. I think Coach Bowden had uh, 14 straight years of being in the top four. Um, so all the rest of us were second and below, and, and that's pretty much what Clemson's been. Last year it changed a little bit, but uh, Dabo's done an amazing job of getting his team back this year and, and being the national picture. I, I looked at some things this morning because I went through a, a similar um, number of years at Texas that Dabo's gone through at, at Clemson now, and he's 160 and 30, uh, 37 as the head coach at uh, Clemson. Second wing is program. 
since 2015 with 99 wins. He's won two national championships. They've appeared in the college football playoff six times, um, seven seasons with at least 11 wins with a chance uh, at, at an eighth and uh, four 14 uh, win seasons. Just absolutely unbelievable the success he's had. Um, and like I said, all of us are trying to catch him. Uh, he's done an amazing job. He's a dear friend of mine. I, I like the way he does it. He does it with class um, and, and can't wait to compete against him this weekend. It'll be a, a real fun challenge for our team. All right. Thank you, coach. We will now go to questions. If you have a question, please use the raise your hand function and I'll call on as many folks as we can get to. Our first question is from Trevor Groves. Go ahead, Trevor. Hey, coach. Uh, the last time you played Clemson, it was an epic game. Uh, 2019, Clemson was number one, riding the nation's longest win streak. You went for the two point conversion. Uh, what do you remember about that game? And, and was that one of the, the tougher losses to swallow in your career? Uh, yes, uh, Trevor, I, I remember I was proud of our guys. They, they hung in there and they had a chance to win till the end. A lot of people wondered why I went for two. We, we were down five starters on defense and Clemson was a whole lot better than we were. And, and they had uh, one of the best quarterbacks to ever play the game. Uh, and, and there was still a minute and 19 seconds left. So that game wasn't near over. Uh, and I just wanted to put more pressure on them if we could get one up. And, and make them try to get down for a field goal. But uh, um, Clemson's won a lot of games, and, and they won a lot of those in the end, and, and we had our chance and just couldn't close it. Thank you, Coach. Good luck Saturday. Thank you, Trevor. Okay, our next question is from C.L. Brown. Go ahead, C.L. Hey, Mac. I was just wondering how you go about hitting the reset button for the team after the, the losses coming into this game. Yeah, see, I'm going to see you tomorrow at 11, so we're going to have to rehash all these questions. So uh, you, you North Carolina guys, if you want to, if we want to ask all of them today, what we'll do is just not have our press conference tomorrow. <laughs> That'll be good. We, we can move forward. Uh, you, you're in a championship game. None of these kids have ever been in this championship game. So they'll be really excited about it. We haven't played Clemson since uh, four years ago. I think next year we play them at Death Valley. So uh, and, and playing Clemson's an exciting thing. It's a, a great challenge. And they know that they're, they're playing as, as good a group of athletes as anybody has in the country. So it, it'll be a, a, a fun challenge for us. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, CL. All right, our next question is from Scott Kiefer. Scott, go ahead with your question. Hey, Mac, I'm just wondering how you feel about the uh, divisions going away in the ACC. You forward against it, neutral? How do you feel? Scott, I was against it. Even, even if we uh, redesigned them, I thought it was so cool that you, you can win a division championship. We, we did the same thing. We had a North and South in the big 12 when I was there. And then we did away with it when some teams left. And I understood because we only had 10 teams in the big 12 and everybody had to play against each other. And I didn't like it as much because right now in the big 12 Saturday, TCU is going to play Kansas state for a second time. And I always thought it's a little awkward playing somebody twice. Normally, when you have divisions, that doesn't happen. Uh, so I was I was one of the few, I think, in the league that voted against it. I, I didn't mind changing up divisions if you want to change some teams so people get to play different play people. But I really like uh, divisions as far as college football is concerned. Very good. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Okay, our next question is from Deanna King. Go ahead with your question. Hey, Coach, uh, there's a lot of North Carolina kids on that Clemson roster. How important is it to play Clemson for recruiting purposes? I think it's good, Dina. They, they, uh, they've beaten us a bunch in recruiting. <laughs> Most of the guys on our team weren't offered by them. So uh, there's a lot of great players on their team that I've tried to recruit that, that decided to go down there. And they've got a great program. They are the standard in this league. They've got outstanding facilities. Dabo's done an amazing job. So uh, I get it. But no, we'll we'll be playing against a lot of great players. I wish we had gotten. Okay, our next question is from Sammy Batten. Go ahead, Sammy. Yeah, Mac. I, just following up on kind of Dina's question. I mean, Charlotte. Uh, both teams have really great players from Charlotte. I mean, is this kind of going to be kind of a, a sidebar to be a kind of a showcase for high school? Uh, talent coming out of Charlotte too. 
It really is. And and playing in Charlotte special for us. And I, I know it is a Dabo because Clemson's not very far from there either. And then next year, our opening game will be with South Carolina in Charlotte, uh, which was the, the first game that I had four years ago when I was here. So uh, playing in Charlotte special, I, I, I've been told it's a sellout. Uh, I know those Clemson fans are going to show up and our fans have been unbelievable the last two home games. Uh, uh, Thanksgiving's always iffy to know how many people can come and some of the weather were question marks and we had a, a packed house and the student section was full and, and, and our crowds have been absolutely unbelievable. So I expect them to be the same way on Saturday night. Our next question is from Evan Abramson. Go ahead, Evan. Hey, Coach, uh, how's it going? Um, thanks for taking the time to speak with us today. My question for you is uh, Clemson obviously has a lot of experience playing in these type of caliber games. You want UNC to get to the point where they're playing in these caliber games as much in the future. Also, with South Carolina beating Clemson, I mean, do you, uh, do you kind of feel like it shows a message that anyone can beat anyone, that there's no reason to be scared? Evan, you, we, we're never scared. You love to play and you love a challenge. And, and, and for us, we're trying to take steps on our program. I mean, four years ago, we won five games in two years. And the team we took over had won two games and hadn't been to a bowl game in a number of years. So uh, every step that we take is, is a step closer to North Carolina football being relevant again. And um, you, you're, one of your goals at the first of the year is to win the Coastal. Another one of your goals is to win the ACC championship. And uh, so that's what makes this so special for these young guys today. I, I thank them for getting us to this point. There's only 10 teams that will play in Power 5 championships this weekend. And they're one of 10 out of 131. So that's pretty cool. All right. We'll go back to Andrea Adelson. Andrea, go ahead. Have a question. Uh, hey, Mac, thanks for doing this. Um, just curious in the last two games, if there's something that defenses have done maybe a little bit differently that have gotten you guys uh, out of rhythm and maybe a little bit more inconsistent on offense. Andre, we just, we haven't played as consistently well. We've still, you know, we didn't score many points against Georgia Tech and that wasn't like us. I think we've gotten impatient. And and we're 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 just wanting to. We scored so fast, and and we scored so much early in the season that the the last couple of games, people are making us work harder to to score points, and and we're not doing that as well. So we just got to go back and relook at who we are, and and start over. And our next question is from John Blau. John, go ahead with your question. Hey, Coach, uh, you were mentioning how a lot of the players at Clemson are guys that you wanted, uh, you weren't able to get. I mean, Drake May is a guy that Clemson recruited and you were able to get. I mean, what were you able to pitch him on? Uh, why do you, what do you think he saw in UNC that made him come to you guys? John, his whole family's been UNC. When, when he was growing up, I said it'd be like Archie Manning not going to Ole Miss. I mean, uh, his dad was uh, one of the leading passers in, in uh, ACC history. His brother won a national championship in basketball. His other brother is uh, is here on our basketball team now. Um, living in Charlotte, he, he's going to have a wonderful career here. He'll have a, a great career in the NFL. And then he'll want to come back and live in Charlotte, in, in my uh, estimation. And, and um, you, you want to go back home. Uh, so he's a, he's a special player. He's a special young man. And we're sure lucky to have him. All right, and we'll go back to Trevor Groves. Trevor, go ahead. Hey, Coach, keeping in that theme, uh, one of the guys you did not get was Will Shipley uh, from the Charlotte area. You recruited him. Um, how how much have you kind of followed his career from a distance and uh, what makes him a special player? What do you have to do to try to bottle him up? Trevor, like everybody else, we all wanted him. In fact, most of the players at Clemson, we all <laughs> wanted So it wasn't just me. Um, and uh, Will's tough. He's fast. I love the way he competes. He's such a great young man. He's got an outstanding family. Is is uh, I got really close to his grandmother. I thought that might be our chance. Um, <laughs> but he's. Uh, I love watching him play. Just the extra yardage he gets, and uh, he he stirs people up when he gets in that game. And and you you love to see a guy that's that talented, but also that competitive, and and knowing that he's a, a wonderful young person. 
Thank you, Coach. Thank you. All right, our next question is from David Teal. Go ahead, David. Mac, you and I are old enough to remember Lawrence Taylor. Do, does LT in 1980 resonate with today's Tar Heels? Well, uh, LT resonates with everything we do. I wish we'd get the pass rush that he had, <laughs> David. Uh, we're not getting any pass rush, and he he got them all. I know the goal line stand at Clemson. Uh, uh, you go back and think about those days, but he was uh, – a special player. He actually had him back to a game last year, and he he, he was here and met a lot of our kids. And um, being one of the greatest players to ever play, he's a uh, he's a guy that uh, a lot of people relate to around here. But does that forty two year drought does that get mentioned in your locker room and the opportunity that you have Saturday night to end it? David, it does, but it, it's something that we went from the bottom. Now you win three games in two years. And I think two of those were, were power five teams. Uh, we've had to start from the bottom and work our way up. And, and it's, it's really interesting to, to watch our team. Uh, they just love to win and everything's new for them. So these guys hadn't been to a bowl game. Then we went to a bowl game. Then we go to the orange bowl. Then last year was a disappointment and now this year, they found a way to win a lot of close games. And very honestly, David, we're about like everybody in the Coastal. Uh, all of our games except Pittsburgh came down to the last drive. And, and so that's kind of who we are. And, and they know that. And, and they know that Clemson's better than the teams that we've played. Uh, so they're going to have to play the, the best game that they've played to have a chance. Okay, our next question is from Anna Adams. Anna, go ahead. Hey, Coach, apologies if you already answered this um, after the game, but any injury update that you could um, provide? I think you had a couple of guys go out um, on Friday. Yeah, Anna, we just came back in today uh, but because they, it was a Friday game and we gave them off Saturday. So Jeremy Sharp will have uh, – um, we got a lot of guys hurt um, during the game uh, and ended up playing a really young secondary the, the second half and fourth quarter. Uh, but Jeremy Sharp will have a, an update before our press conference tomorrow. But we really haven't. The trainers are looking at them and evaluating them today, and, and they'll give us a report uh, tonight before we go to bed. Okay, our next question is from David Hale. David, go ahead. Hey, Mac. Uh, appreciate, <clears throat> appreciate you doing this as always. Um, you mentioned earlier that, that one of the reasons you came back to UNC was, was with the hopes of, of – delivering a sense of national relevancy to the Tar Heels program again. Um, this obviously being a big step towards that. How much do you does that um, equate into your plans for the future? Would winning an ACC title, would you say, hey, all right, I did it, let's go out on top? Or are you just kind of saying, I'm having fun doing this, I'm going to keep doing it, and, and sort of where meeting those goals is, where it doesn't matter to you in, in terms of that decision? David, they, they really – obviously they matter because you, but it doesn't in, in regards to that decision at all. I like winning, losing stinks. Um, <laughs> I, I think everybody that lost yesterday, and there were a bunch of them that lost a whole lot of important things yesterday and Friday would all tell you that it stinks. Uh, I just told our team winning's fun. Thank you for the nine. The other stink, uh, just part of it. Um, and, and let's, let's just keep working to get better, but no, um, I, I just, I want these kids to be happy. I want them to, to be learning and growing and having a better life after they get out of here. And that's really the reason that Sally and I came back. Uh, but we also want North Carolina football to be relevant again. Larry Fedora did a tremendous job here. He was the last time we were in this game, he was the reason and, and came down to an onside kick and had a chance to win it. Uh, but it, it's, they struggled in the end and, um, I love this place. Uh, I love these fans and, and the administration and got so many uh, top boosters that are dear friends of mine for 30 years. Uh, so it's unlike most people that are coaching. Uh, I'm coaching to help the place and help these kids. And um, I'm, that's why I'm so proud of them for this university and for these kids. Uh, a bunch of these kids were on that uh, a two and 10 football team. Um, because of the COVID year, we've still got a lot of kids that are fighting through that. So uh, this is a, a, a really great opportunity for them uh, to feel good about themselves. 
All right, we got a few more minutes. Reminder to use your raise your hand function. I know Sammy Batten, you had a follow up. You go ahead. Perhaps we lost you, Sammy. All right, let's go to Lawton Swan with Clemson Sports Talk. Go ahead, Lawton. Hey, Coach, I'm, I'm sure you're just getting prepared for the Tigers, obviously, but have you seen any crossover film on this team and what you have seen of them, you know, what might give you some concerns going into the matchup on Saturday night? Lawton, they run the ball so well. You know, the, the, the quarterback's so big and strong, and he's, he's lost weight from last year and looks much more athletic, and, and you, you get uh, he and Will Shipley back there. Uh, they're always good in the offensive line. They've always got the big tall receivers that can make plays um so that that's who they are they've been running this offense forever and uh and they're really really good at it and you look at defensively they're as good as anybody in the country i mean their defensive front uh, uh those guys every year they, they just rotate them they all look great uh they look like the what the rest of us want to be like and and get like in in their defensive front seven uh, they've always got skilled people in in the back end but uh uh, again, you look at their defensive line, and uh, it's it's hard to uh, – we've we've struggled the last two weeks offensively. It's hard to figure out how you'd make some yards. All right, Sammy, I see you on there. We'll try you one more time. <laughs> yeah, can you hear me now, yeah. Mac? <laughs> yeah. Yes, Sammy. Yeah, yeah I, Mac, I was just wondering, uh, has the town of Boo in the Charlotte area gotten even deeper – uh, since your first time around at UNC? Sammy, absolutely. And I, I think it's, but we had 29 million people in the state of Texas. And, and there's a lot more people in this state and specifically Charlotte than there were when I left. Uh, but now there's great players in Charlotte every year and it, it's a hotbed and everybody in the country can fly in there. So they're all very, very highly recruited, but they're well coached. The population is such that there's so many great players there and that's why I love playing this game in Charlotte and, and, and I love opening up next year with South Carolina and Charlotte, because we'll have a lot of the locals that are, uh, that are coming, but we're, we're signing more and more Charlotte kids each year. And, and really, and truly Sammy, we had some when we were here before, but not near as much as we have now. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Seeing no other questions, we'll let coach Brown go coach. Thanks for joining us this evening and we'll see you uh, on Friday. Thank you, guys. Appreciate what you all do to, to follow college sports, and we'll see you on Friday. Thanks, Mac. Thanks, everyone. We'll have a recording Thanks. available uh, after this is uh, downloads. Thank you.